turn it over to Akeem, who is our creative lead, and Raji, um, our multimedia designer, to kind of take you through the design workshop and give you a look at how is design being done for digital. Um, over to you, Akeem. Thank you, David. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Yes, hearing you perfectly. All right, thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, again, uh, thank you for allowing us to come on here. Uh, so we have Raji here with us. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, as Javis said, I'm the multimedia developer here for Point Global Marketing. Um, and Akeem. Yes, I am the creative lead for the uh, Point Global team here. And I will be taking you guys through the uh, the uh, digital uh, design with digital in mind workshop, and um, hopefully you guys should be able to get some pointers in terms of uh, what goes through the mind of uh, creatives during the um, creative process. Uh, let me uh, share my screen here with me. Design with digital in mind uh, for my practice labs. Uh, a uh, initiative to try and help uh, smaller businesses um, get on track with digital and uh, other branding uh, services. So let's start with the agenda. So we'll go through uh, the current state of digital, uh, key concepts, uh, design thinking, which has uh, some uh, stages involved, empathy, uh, definition, ideation, prototyping, and testing. We also have a brand activity and uh, we go through some takeaways after um, the session here. Uh, so let's get started with the state of digital. So currently, uh, nearly 60% of the world's population um, is now uh, recorded to be on digital platforms in some form or shape. Uh, and uh, this can be from social media uh, over to um, any other uh, digital platforms as well. Um, and this is, uh, the source of this is from uh, the uh, latest study from Suite, uh, the Global State of Digital uh, 2021. Also, a billion new social media users have been uh, established or signed up within the last three years. So that's quite a lot right there. Uh, close to 45% of internet users research products that they think of purchasing on social media. And uh, let's go through some key concepts here. So we have search engine optimization. Uh, you may have heard the term SEO. So this is the full term. Uh, this normally goes hand in hand with Google, which is the largest search provider uh, for any search whatsoever, whether it's from product purchases, uh, research, or so on. Uh, we have the human-centered approach, where the audience is thought of first. Uh, before a, any project or design is uh, considered. We also have color theory uh, that normally goes hand in hand with uh, the psychology of colors and how people relate to those colors in design as well. We have responsiveness. Uh, this speaks to uh, different device sizes uh, when accessing different websites or portals. And uh, lastly, uh, we have design thinking, which will go a bit in more in depth uh, coming up as well. All right, so for design thinking, uh, this can be seen as a human-centered approach to innovation. Uh, this is normally anchored in uh, understanding the customers uh, needs rapid prototyping and generating creative ideas. 
uh, that will uh, transform the way you develop products, services, processes, and organizations. Uh, by using design thinking, you make decisions based on what the customer really wants instead of relying on data and uh, instinct or uh, instinct based on uh, instead of uh, evidence. Uh, so design thinking is not only specific to design, uh, it can be uh, seen in multiple sectors uh, where it's thinking about the, or empathizing with the, the customer or the client that you want to make or create something for. Uh, it's thinking of them first and basically uh, forming that product around them or with them at the lead of the process. So we'll go a bit depth in uh, bit in depth with design thinking here. So we have five main stages for design thinking, and we'll be bringing in Raji uh, here when we reach uh, closer to the uh, ideating stage. So uh, for empathizing, uh, we have basically where the uh, designer or creator um, basically puts themselves in the, the, the shoes or gets the perspective of the uh, client uh, when creating or uh, finding some type of solution for that customer. Uh, next, we have defining, where the idea is to uh, get insights or form conclusions uh, based on that initial um, empathy. And uh, then we have the stage where uh, we ideate. So basically, that's uh, where normally brainstorming happens, uh, potential ideas are thought of and so on and so forth. Next stage is of the uh, design thinking concept. Uh, we have prototyping where we um, create a small versions of the final product uh, where we can have or show interactions on how to put on a possibly uh, final product. So that could be uh, on a mock-up or it's on a uh, Phone, for example, uh, where we can have a, a version of the final product before we go into the testing phase. The testing phase is where we get uh, user feedback uh, that can be via interviews, questionnaires, and a host of other, host of other uh, platforms. Uh, we have a small activity here. Uh, so the idea is to try and get uh, some uh, feedback as to these popular brands here. Uh, and for the brands, uh, we'd like uh, some of the participants to basically put in the chat the names of these brands uh, without actually knowing or seeing the exact logos of the specific brands. So it would be uh, great if we can get some, some responses uh, for the brand activity. So we are, we're having some, some responses here. So we have Target, Domino's, uh, uh, here responses. Just looking for those responses where we review all the brands. Okay. That's a few more minutes before we review them. Okay, so uh, we have had a few responses. So for these brands, uh, these are the brands in their simplest forms. And uh, this shows how a brand and the colors can uh, in multiple uh, digital platforms, whether it's a icon for a logo 
or a icon for a app uh, screen itself, you can still uh, be able to identify these. So from the left, we have Target, uh, Pepsi, we have MasterCard, Domino's, and uh, right then. So we have a few key takeaways that we'd like to go over uh, just to uh, basically review some of the uh, key points uh, that we'd like uh, to uh, be seen here. So one, uh, digital no based on numbers and not just stock rivals in traditional media. So whether it's an ad via a television station or radio, digital uh, most likely, most instances will give a better uh, return on investment in terms of viewership, uh, potential audiences, and so on. Also, I, uh, yes, I would, yeah, I would think that uh, you know traditional media how it has always been, you know, for brands, especially smaller brands, uh, would have been a bit harder for them. You know to get the opportunity to show their uh, products or services to a wider audience. So I think that's why digital has become so much popular. It's faster than you know traditional media. It's also more readily available to everyone, and it's more of a level platform to showcase a brand than say say uh, on television or on the radio. You know. So I think that's why you know you'd want to have more of a digital platform, especially now that you know everyone's in a pandemic. You know, you know, um, so you know, so you'll be able to reach more people, especially with everyone you know at home on the phones or whatever. Yes, I would agree, and that goes into the second point where uh, digital allows for targeted uh, impact both in design and. So this is where you can set up ads specific to uh, different groups in different diaspora uh, or geographical areas. Uh, also, uh, data also allows for changes and small iterations uh, in real time. So uh, this means that if there is uh, a small feedback from a uh, customer or client, uh, this can be done on the fly where changes uh, can be done reviewed, and uh, sent back uh, within a shorter period versus uh, physical media where or uh, video where it would take a longer time to reprint, reschedule, uh, recut, uh, and so on for uh, those traditional media. I think. Uh, I think that uh, with digital as well, um, the target audience, you can get a much more defined target audience with digital media than you would say with uh, traditional like uh, television, placing a television ad and, you know, you would, you would hope that you get, uh, they will say that you get a time slot versus you have it online and it's there for and it's basically, it basically shows up how you uh, how you plan to implement the ad. It basically shows up where anybody searching something related to you, related to your product or services. So it then reach an audience that has has a likely chance for you to to turn them over into customers. So that is one way where traditional where digital media has now exceeded traditional media more targeted audience also with the ability to to change a design on the fly uh, where clients are more you are more likely to get client feedback especially putting something online and you know put ch quicker changes can be made to that versus you know you have paid for a time slot and they have said you know they're running this at this amount of times 
um, you know, it will be harder to try and convince them to change the times of versus you having uh, putting it on a digital platform where you can switch in and switch out, or if the platform allows, you know, uh, making changes to the redesign online there. So that's one way, uh, another way that digital media has, you know, surpassed or is ahead of traditional. Okay, so, uh, so we'll ask Rajay to go through this, uh, just to show some of the uh, steps that would be taken to bring a, a idea from scratch and some of the key elements that we need. So this is a basically a sneak peek, you know, behind one of our internal projects. Uh, not much information will be disclosed for it, but uh, we will we will discuss a lot of the design elements that went into the uh, guide, basically. So one thing when you're designing uh, anything in mind is what it is and what it's going to be used for and on what platform. So, you know, this would be um, used for, we had the idea in mind to use it for a web and also an app. So we would have um, elements that we know that would be in there that would be ready, readily available to place in um, to place in on um, websites, popular websites, search engines, or you know po um, popular app, app development developing tools. For the logo, we uh, had designed the logo with the idea of contrast in mind. So, because you know, a lot of a lot of times, digital media is being consumed on smaller devices. So you know, phones and tablets and stuff not really consumed on computers, which is generally a more productive or production tool. Uh, so when we had the idea of the logo in mind, we wanted to design it to see how it would work on different backgrounds. So this is where uh, this sheet would be uh, developed so that we can get the idea and a sense of how the logo would appear on different backgrounds, making sure that no matter which one it's on, there's a good contrast, everything is legible, um, making sure that the logo shines through, you know, and you want to try it on colors that most websites would use it whether they are their standard or have a dark one. They're more than likely to use uh, standard white or the standard black. Uh, we also wanted to try it on our uh, on our color palette, which was one of the co colors that we have chosen. So these are the um, these are the color palettes for the. Um, logo as you, as you can see we are listed out as we have listed out as primary color and the primary colors are generally the colors that are used on the logo itself on the icon of the logo itself while the secondary is generally used for text or font so you will have uh, set fonts that you can use and the font the reason why you want to choose colors for the font is so that on any different background, you can uh, change the color to contrast it. For example, if the logo was on a black background, you'd want to use the white font to contrast it, and similar and vice versa. Um, the primary colors, you know, you want it to be bold and pop. You know, the main focus of people's attention, and it doesn't need to be the uh, the color that's the most viewed. Or the one that, or the one that takes up the most space on the logo, it just has to be, you know, the one that you strike and have, you know, it's it's bold, it's there, and you know, grab your attention. With the other colors in the primary colors, in general, is those that complement it and give give a good um, contrast with the uh, the bold, the bold primary colors for the fonts. You would generally want to know what uh, media you will be using it. For example, if you were to print something out, 
you generally want to use fonts that are easily uh, can easily can be printed. So you know are bold and you know can see you wouldn't want to use fonts that are very thin because it could be hard to print it out on you know for example a t-shirt. But you want but uh, if you're concerned is with digital media, you know, for websites and stuff, you generally want to use um, fonts that are supported by a lot of web editing. So these fonts are supported by Google fonts and are uh, generally easy, generally easy to um, get and change on any website. So a lot of website supports uh, use Google fonts and support it. So with this in mind, if we were, for example, to create a website, it would be easier, it would be easier to have everything, you know, be coherent and seamless and have the same font versus you using an obscure, you know, obscure font um, that's not supported by a lot of websites that, um, that you know, you, your logo or um, your logo or your banner has, you know, their individual font, but then the rest of the page doesn't have the same look. So you want to keep everything consistent and um, unified. Uh, this is what uh, tool here is a great example of ideation. Uh, that is a main step in the uh, process of design thinking. Uh, one of the main uh, modules that we enter. Uh, this uh, takes into consideration uh, testing in terms of having it done on multiple backgrounds, uh, also different platforms. So, for example, uh, the print color space would be different from the uh, digital color spaces. And uh, we can also uh, point you uh, guys to a one of the articles that expands on how color and other uh, color theory and other uh, systems in terms of placement, uh, platforms, color, and how all of that uh, basically affects and determines where and how the logo is. So uh, definitely we'll be able to uh, point you guys over to our uh, blog page where we have a branding, uh, a branding article right here. Uh, so with that, uh, definitely would like to thank you guys for bearing with us to the proceeds here, and uh, we'd like to uh, turn it back over to Javet uh, to uh, basically. Uh, get any questions in thank you thank you for that um presentation um we realize that you guys are are, are usually behind the screen and not in front of it <laughs> uh well thank you nonetheless i have a question uh as a, you're, you're, you you have worked on a number of projects what would you say uh for clients when they are dealing with external an external agency an external designer quickly because we don't have a lot of time what is the is the you know, one, two, three things that helps you, the designer, to be able to deliver uh, fully what they're expecting. A few things to consider is a color palette. So basically a defined set of colors. Uh, this will be that you have uh, one guide or one main set of uh, tools uh, to work with in terms of color. So color may be seen differently on different platforms. Uh, so the color guide with specific codes uh, definitely help. Uh, another uh, key factor to consider uh, possibly would be where the content would be going. So uh, the platforms will determine sizes, uh, we determine what color is supported, what fonts are supported. Also, it will determine, uh, for example, uh, what size is ideal for 
uh, responsiveness on websites and so on. Uh, and finally, is that the same? Is that the same in your case, um, Rajiv? Mm -hmm. Is that the, the those are the defining things for for you as a designer, or is there? What about a design brief? Is that important? Oh, definitely important. Also, the uh, a design brief, you know, guiding the clients, and that also plays in with um, empathy, making sure that the client knows that you have their their their, their interests aligned with yours, and making sure that the um, product management is also clear. You know, it, it basically is the best, to the best that it can be, and you know, we get the greatest, um, the uh, the greatest thing that you can get out of it. And I'm a lot, a lot so it, but, yeah, uh, right. you basically you want to, you know, you want your client to know that you have your best, the best interest. You know, no understand them. You know that there is a good understanding between you and the design that you're creating. And, you know, hopefully that shows out in the brief that we create for them and, you know, go from there. Totally understandable. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Raji. Thank you very much, Akeem, uh, for that very, very insightful um, workshop around design. I, I hope uh, the audience took the need for understanding a color palette, the need for, for understanding different font. Uh, understanding where the design is going to be placed, which platforms and all of that. Mm -hmm.